Hey everyone, it's Calvin again, and welcome back to my channel. So today we're going to finish off this jobs application, and that's mainly going to be pagination down here. So we do have a problem with the way our, we're getting the data. We're not going to be able to do this 10 here, so the very last page, because we're not getting any page data from our API request. We're only getting a list of the 50 jobs of whatever that page is. So we're just going to scratch that because it's not possible. We can instead still do the ellipsis, and that is just to make the logic have that if we have a full list, that means there will be another page after this. So first, let's go back to our code, and we're going to open up our components directory and make another module that we'll just call it pagination. And let's start with the index.ts file. We have pagination module.css file, and then the main pagination tsx component file. While we're still inside of the index, let's make sure that we export everything from that component file, just so we don't forget. And let's open up the component file. Let's just fill that in really quick. Now I want to start with the props, because we know we'll have the current page. And with the way we set up our application, we're going to have an onChange method that we can change the page number. But then finally, I also want to add a has next boolean, just because we're going to set it up so we have some conditional rendering. So let's destructure our props and start our pagination component. We're going to start simple, just so we can see it. But right now we're going to have a div with the current page number and then also a next, which we'll replace with the icon of the next arrow thing. But this should be enough to add it to our main index page. So let's just go here and let's just grab that component we just created and then add it on the bottom. Let's see, I want it inside the full width container, so it'll be right here. So we'll do add pagination and then we need to find the props. So that means we're going to go back up to where we've set all of our state and create a new one, which will be page and set page. And we'll start at zero. And that should be enough to do current and set the page. We can then set page to unchange. And then has nice is just going to be if the jobs length is equal to 50. And we know 50 is just because we played around with the data coming back. But that's going to be the length of the array. So let's go take a look at what we have so far which is not going to be pretty. It's just these two down here. So we need to make some changes. Well, first, let's create the class name. And I guess I'll just call it pagination, which we're going to do flex. Actually, I want to do justify flex end here, which means we'll have another container inside. That way, it'll always be at the very end. And the container at the very end is also going to be display flex, just so we can get all the buttons in the right place. Hopefully that's not too confusing because we have a flex box inside of a flex box. But here's the main styling. So we're going to have a pagination button. It'll have equal height and width, and we're going with 3 rem here. We're going to box it in with a border and then also round out the corners. And both the border and, and the text color is going to match. And finally, we're going to give it some margin so then all the buttons are separated from each other. So next, we need to add this class name to both of the buttons. And I'm going to change this placeholder to be the string of an arrow, just to help us visualize it. And we can take a look at what that looks like so far. Now, I'm not sure if you can see this with my face in the way, so I'll just open up another terminal. So the colors right, um, the text itself, not so much. And I know a very easy way to fix that is just to add more flex. And we're going to center everything inside. Now that also means that within the div itself, we're going to surround the text with a span just so it plays nicely with the actual text itself. And we'll make sure to add that to both for now. And that'll give us that little centered look. The next thing to do is to change the colors when we hover over it. So the border color as well as the text color, we're going to change it to our link blue color. So then it kind of goes to that kind of look. Now it's time to bring in the icons because this little arrow is not really going to be enough. We need to go back to common.icon and here we'll import the right and left icon and specifically it's going to be the chevrons and make sure we export those and before we leave let's also get the ellipsis and this one is the dot horizontal icon and there we go and now we can just import those icons so right now we just need the right icon and that means we can replace this span down here with the right icon and then we can do one last peek at these two before we start filling this out with some more functionality so we know that on the icon click, we want to do a on click to call the on change method. And we can do that by doing page plus one. However, I want to make a helper function kind of here. 
called increment because a little later we'll also have a on back button so a decrement as well so then we can send the increment here and i want to test this out mostly because i know it's gonna do something weird that we'll have to fix later on so let's just try to do the click here nothing changes oh that's right it's not hooked up yet okay going back to the index page on change only calls set page and i was actually trying to make it call another function which i'm calling handle page change and this is where we're going to do set page as the count or what we're using to handle page change which we'll then call handle search and speaking of which we need to add page to our body and make search optional and the problem that i was trying to show is that we could right now change the page too quickly so we need to be able to disable the paginator while we're loading and right now we don't have any sort of indicator that new jobs are being loaded so the first step is to have a loading indicator and at this point we have enough state that we could create a context but i'm lazy so we're just gonna have kind of a mess of state management here of just using a component state but that's fine but let's add the handle page change into this on chain and replace the set page so handle page change now i'm going to do it here instead of later is that i'm going to put page plus one here and count minus one here just because the first page starts at zero inside of the state but we want our pagination to, to start displaying at one so that'll just fix that small cosmetic change and then with that loading indicator we can also make another prop here called disabled we'll change the interface in a little bit because we also need to add this loading indicator to hide the map of job cards we can do something like loading inside of a ternary. And for now, I guess I'll just do loading dot dot dot. But we need to replace this with an actual loading indicator. And so far, we're not actually setting loading. So we need to add another then inside this promise chain to set it to false as well as start the loader at the very beginning. And I want to start by creating a loading indicator. So we're going to expand this common module to include a loader.tsx component file. Now the loader is gonna be pretty simple in that we're just gonna be using the refresh icon as the load icon. Although I wanna add CSS to it, so let's create a common module.css and we might as well have an index.ts to just fill out this common module. So I'm gonna export the loader here as well as open up the common module CSS file. And first we're gonna make the icon pretty big by making it eight rims for the height and width as well as making it display blocks so we could have it have auto margin so it'll center and then i'm using the color gray to fill it up so that means all we have to do here is do class name is css.load and we need to import the css module so that'll work now i want to do a, something a little fancy so we'll add some css animations to this where we're going to spin the loader indefinitely and we need to add the animation to the path component because remember this icon is a SVG. So it has a path element inside of it. And then we'll also state that the transform origin is the center. So it spins from the middle, not from its corner. So with that, we could add that to our index page right here. So the next step is to fix this pagination. So we need to add disabled to the props. So going back to pagination, we now have a new prop called disabled and it's a Boolean. And the first thing that we're gonna do with disabled is to make sure that these on clicks don't work. And what we're adding into the truthy clause of paternary is that we're gonna create a function that does nothing. So this is like a no operation function. But we need to add the no op to decrement as well. And with all of that in place, we can expand this pagination to be much more inclusive with all the different buttons and functionality that we can have. So speaking of which, let's kind of go over what I mean. So here we have the current page, which is just all in blue. We have the very next page and the ellipsis. So you can kind of see that there's two subcomponents to the pagination. We'll have a has next, which will take in the very next page, an ellipsis if there's more, and then also the very, just clicking next. And then on the left side, we'll do the same thing in reverse order. And what that means to me is that we're going to create two other subcomponents. The first one is going to be has next.tsx. And what pagination has next 
once it's going to be a number and two different functions so we want one for on increment which we already created but we also want one called on set and on set is going to be if the value of has max is three it'll go directly to page three but with all of those props we can destructure them and i'm going to start with just the right icon that we've already created we're also going to want one for ellipsis so that's the dot 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 and then finally on the very top we'll have another pagination button for the value and this time on click is going to call on set so on set is setting the page once again so style wise we want something for the ellipsis because we want to remove the gray border but we still want to reuse most of the styles from pagination button we just want to add another class called more or something like that so css wise we need to target both classes and you can do that by doing both of the classes with no spaces in between but all we need to do here is just remove the border and i forgot to add the props here there we go that's better now we can just copy all of this because we want another component called as previous so it has pre.tsx and of course this means we need to change the name so pre 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 and to, just to be clear i'm going to change this to on decrement just so that there's no confusion and then instead of the right icon, we want the left icon. But then after that, all we need to do is change the order of this. So the icon goes first, then the ellipsis, then the value. On previous, there is a small difference. And that's that we don't want to render the ellipsis if the page number is, the previous page is at one. So the ellipsis is actually going to hide if the previous page is less than two, which makes sense, right? This makes it so that we're if we're on page two, we only see page one and the left icon for previous, but then if we're on page three, we get the ellipsis. Now that we've completed both of these subcomponents, we go back to the main pagination component and add them in. And the first step is to remove this right icon because it's no longer here, it's in the has next. And also has next is our remaining prop. So we can now do an and 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 call pagination has next and then fill in these props. So value, is current plus one and then on increment is going to be increment but we still need to create it on set so we're going to make another helper function that we could hide with the disabled behind a no op or a no operation button but we want something like this where we get a number and then we can send it in as a number however we need to send in a delayed function into has next and has previous so what we can do is just make a function that returns a function and this one is going to have number like so and this way on set we can define what the argument is going to be which is current plus one and then lastly we need to do the same thing for previous and we don't have a prop for this but luckily it's an easy calculation we just have to make sure that current is greater than one and then finally we just need to send in the props so on decrement is decrements and then set page is set page and this is mad because Oh, I think we need to also delay the no operation as well. So, so we got a dunk here that returns a dunk. So there we go. And I think that's good. Now there's only one change I want to make and that's a style change. And that's because the current page needs to be blue and doesn't hover. So we'll do pagination button. And this time we're calling it active with a background color and border color of blue. And then we'll make sure that the color of the text is white so we can actually see it. And then we also need to add this active class. So we'll do the template string trick that we have added before. Remember to add a space. And it'll have a pagination button and the class of active. And then we change the current class name to active. And now we can take a look at our pagination, which doesn't look half bad. Let me just open up the terminal so you can see. Uh, we might need to change the ellipsis a little bit, but that's okay. But now if we click two, we get our little thing. And we definitely need to change some of these styles, but are these even the same icons? And it turns out they are not. So we need to get rid of the box. We want the regular icon. And we also need to get rid of the circle from dots horizontal. But there's also another benefit of having all of our icons in one place with aliases because this is the only place we need to change it so that fixes the look of it and then we do know that the pagination works and the page is changing so this is definitely different data 
So we're done with this application. I did mention that I'm gonna go over deployment and I need to keep that promise. And luckily the go-to way to do it is go to Vercel.com and they make it really easy to deploy a Next.js app because you know they made Next.js. So all you need to do is just click on new project or if this is the first time you're using Vercel, this is the first place you'll see it. And then you just click on import on the Git repository that you've saved it. And you just click the next buttons. And this is gonna be the most important panel here. It already knows that it's the Next.js app. So you don't have to edit these because we're using the defaults. But once you deploy it, it's gonna call next build and it's gonna run that build. And the only thing you need to do from this step is to click the deploy button, which is over here. I'm not gonna do it because I've already deployed it, which is over here under this project called next jobs. And we can visit. Now the really cool thing about this method of deployment is that it creates our API route as a serverless function. So we don't have to worry about deploying the back end of it because it's already up and everything's normal. We can scroll all the way down, click our next button, and then we can also check if there's any new closure jobs, which there aren't. There's still only the circle CI jobs, but that's okay. But there you have it. We finished the GitHub jobs listing application in Next.js and I hope you enjoyed this video series and I'll see you next time.